Are you a Scrum Master or you have a development team and you wonder how you can go faster? How can you improve the velocity? Then I have a good news for you. There is a lot that you can do. And in this video, I'm going to share with you 15 things that you can do today to improve your development team velocity. Let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Anka, I'm an Agile coach and in this channel I'm sharing a lot of tips and tricks on how you can be more efficient using Agile and not only. So if you are new to this channel, consider to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, share this video and let's jump into our topic. Scrum Team Velocity is about consistency. We don't want to go faster. We don't want to double this velocity. What we want to do is to find our ideal pace after we optimized everything that we could optimize and stay constant at that speed. Because consistency will bring us predictability. Every team and every company needs predictability so you can plan for the future. You can know what's coming up, how much money we need, how much sales we can do, we can get investment, there is a lot of things we can do if we have predictability. So to recap, when it comes to velocity, the first thing we want to do is to be able to measure it. The second thing is to optimize it as much as possible. And third is to stay constant. In this video, I'm going to share with you 15 things that you can do to optimize your team's velocity, but of course also to keep it constant. To be able to measure velocity, we need to have defined the definition of done. The definition of done means what are the criteria, the generic criteria of any piece of work that needs to meet in order to be considered completed. For Agile to really work and to really bring you benefits, you need to make sure that you take a piece of work from the beginning all the way till facing the customer. Or what I'm always saying, if you cannot bring it to, to face the customer, make it in a way that there is absolutely no additional effort for the team to do to make it available for the customer. Because if you are just bringing something all the way till a development environment, if you are a software company or just on your team to review, there is a long, long way till that faces the customer. And that part is going to come against you. After you sorted out the definition of done and making sure everything goes all the way to production, then is when we can talk about optimizing our velocity. And today's video is about 15 tips of optimizing your velocity after you can measure it. And we start with tip number one, and it's about focus. Focus is key, and your role as a Scrum Master or as a manager of a development team is to make sure that the team can focus in, on one thing at a time. In one working day, we are not going to have multiple subjects that the team needs to jump from a place to another because that is what consumes a lot of time that gets us distracted that gets us to miss things that gets us focusing on something into something else it's the number one reason of things taking longer than foreseen the first thing you can do is to take one subject make sure it is done all the way to production and then pick up the next one. And ideally do it as everyone focuses in one topic in one time as a team. Then the tip number two is don't allow distractions. A lot of times we have uh, notifications that are popping up. We have uh, tickets from production that are popping up. We have people interrupting with questions. We have small requests that seem very, very uh, simple, but in reality they take some time, basically they distract the team from it. We, you yourself or the stakeholders may have simple questions that will help them to think further strategically. Well, all of these things, all these distractions are taking away the focus of the team. Your role as a Scrum Master or as a manager of a development team is to take these things away. If you want to have the feedback, if you want to ask them, you can set up either a time like half an hour every day or twice a week, and that's it. Then the tip number three, the product owner is part of the team. The product owner is the person that is the voice of the customer that defines the backlog. And a lot of the times I'm seeing that the product owner, the one that defines the scope, is waiting for the team to deliver something. So poor team 
they need to imagine and they need to make sure there is no room for mistake whenever they are developing something. But if the product owner will be part of the team and this person is going to be approachable, is going to be there for questions, can check, can test what the team is doing, what are the outputs, can, they, can give feedback, can give more insights about how those functionalities will be used, then that will help the team to don't lose time in going on the wrong direction or losing time in overthinking some things or trying to find all the possible solutions. This relationship is very important. And if you don't have a product owner in your team, someone who can be the voice of the customer or a customer representative, uh, that is going to be great to give access to the team very quickly on a day-to-day basis. Fourth thing that you can do to improve your team's velocity is that you have a product owner or you have someone who is filtering the feedback. In Scrum, we have a ceremony called Sprint Review. Then is when we are demonstrating the work done and we receive feedback. There will be a lot of feedback and this feedback needs to be filtered, prioritized by the product owner so the team will know what to take into consideration and what not to take into consideration. From the development team perspective, they need to have simple instructions prioritized and they need to know that there is only one source of truth and they always go to that one. And we go to point number five, putting a barrier between the feedback, the us and the team. Depending on your team setup, you may have, they may have access to the end clients or they may have access to other stakeholders inside the company. And they may ask for things. Is the, the Scrum Master's role the, to make sure that the team is not distracted, to make sure that the team has a safe place to work and they can focus on the priorities that they define to implement these features. In real life, we may end up with a product owner that comes and asks for little upgrades, like we have a version of a functionality, and then this person is asking for more functionality, some tiny things that are coming when seeing how that user story looks like. What is important as a Scrum Master or as a manager of the development team is to know when to say stop. There is always a next sprint where we can bring improvements, but if we want to finish something, we have to don't go on and on and on forever with all the tiny improvements. We have to take a version that is good enough, that is usable, and the feedback can come in the next sprint. And it is really the job of the Scrum Master or the manager of the team to say, I think this version is good enough, it's good to release it for this sprint, and we can take the improvements on the next sprint. Because if not, you estimate something at the beginning of the sprint and you end up delivering double the scope that you estimated at the beginning. And that takes me to the point number six, and that is showing the hard work that the development team is doing. And outside the development team, the management, Word works with numbers, works with facts. And your role as a Scrum Master is you take all this hard work and you find the measurements that is going to demonstrate it. Velocity can be one of them, then you can see the number of bugs, you can find features release or simple appreciation. This is something that will make the Scrum team be more motivated, maybe efficient, and it will come from inside the team to want to help. And from experience, I can tell you that this is something that will take you way further than the best and most well-written specifications and other methodologies. People willingness to help, it's very important. Use it, show the hard work to the management with metrics. And we go to number seven, take one story at a time. This is a hard one, especially when we have inside our team front-end, back-end, QA, designing. We are all different kind of skills inside the team and that's perfectly normal, but if we can take one piece of functionality, one user story at a time, it will help us to go faster. And you can cut it short 
and you can cut it smaller so it can go faster. You want to go as quick as possible into, through the whole process. It is demonstrated scientifically that if you take small pieces of work, they will go faster through the pipeline than if you take a big chunk that is hard to move it. So your role as a Scrum Master is to help, to coach the team, to split the scope in a way that they can take it one by one together and finish one story at a time. Tip number seven, guide the team to take one story at a time. You look on your backlog, you start a piece of work and you try to finish it all the way till production. You work together with designers, content creators, front-end developers, back-end developers, testers, everyone tests together. And I know we all have different skills and sometimes it may be a bit challenging to do that, but you can always jump in. If there is something to test, at the end of the day, you are producing a future that is for someone, for a client, and everyone should be able to understand what is that. So don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone, out of your area of speciality, to help everyone to deliver one story at a time. Passing through all this chain, one by one, it's going to help us. And that takes me to tip number eight. Break the story small. For us to be, t to be able to take one story at a time, we need to break it small and we need to uh, break it smart. So we don't do one user story per person, but we do one user story that the whole team can contribute to bring it all the way to production. There are multiple ways to split the user stories. Check out the recommended video that I put up in the corner. And, uh, and I'm going to go to the tip number nine. It's what I told you at the beginning. The velocity cannot grow forever. And this is something that everyone should have in mind. We want to optimize it as much as possible. But so your role as a Scrum Master is that you don't bring pressure to the team to add inflation to your story points. Because if you add inflation, it's going to be exactly what happens on a country that after some point, after some time, there will be so many zeros and you are going to have maybe a worse life quality. We want to keep the life quality. We want to keep the numbers. We don't want to get financial people that would need to learn of how to cut the zeros on a currency. So your role as a Scrum Master is that nobody has to deal with that. To help with that very easily, I usually have a benchmark. Like you have some benchmark user stories and I always, whenever we do refinement and we estimate new user stories, we look against the benchmark and we add our user stories in those particular boxes to call it like that. And tip number 10, implement the improvements from the retrospective. In the retrospective, your role as a Scrum Master or as a development team manager, you want to learn how to improve it and you also need to make sure that these improvements, these suggestions of improvements are getting applied in reality. I see a lot of the teams that they discuss something in the retrospective, but then that doesn't happen afterwards. This is not all right. And the development team are the ones that are going to suffer for it. So make sure you do the improvements from the retrospective. And tip number 11, prevent bugs. You may wonder, how can I prevent the bugs as a Scrum Master? Well, you can help to make sure that the definition of done is respected. And you can also help with measuring the bugs against the user stories. I know that's not something very easy, but it's part of your Scrum Master role to help the team. Because if you can come with a report towards the team and show, well, we have these bugs, I link them to these user stories, uh, or some of them you may not able to link them to the user stories, and then the team can come and propose for solutions. And in the retrospective, you can also have a root cause analysis of these bugs and the actions that you define there, you can take them and make sure that they're implemented. And tip number 12, improve the team collaboration. People talking to each other, having the right attitude, having this facility of collaborating, that will take us a long way. I've seen teams that have an amazing collaboration and they get things done in just a few minutes, where if we add a lot of processes in place, 
how to move the tickets in Jira, how to talk to each other, when to talk, how to report things. All of this will make things slower. We want to bring, we want to make sure we don't forget about the human component of the teams and it makes it a nice atmosphere. Anything you can do as a Scrum Master or as a team manager to facilitate the collaboration between the team members is going to be reflected in your team velocity. And I'm going to go to the point number 13. Point number 13 is refine the backlog. The reality is that if you don't do refinement and you come with a list of user stories that are kind of clear when you do the planning and when you implement them, you start to identify a lot of cases that you didn't think before, guess what? What you plan for, what you estimated is not valid anymore because you end up implementing something else. So as a Scrum Master, as a development team manager, make sure the backlog is refined before if you want a constant velocity. And I'm going to go to number 14, make use of spikes. Spikes are time boxes used for research of a certain topic that we don't know how to estimate it or we haven't done before and we have many questions. Ideally, you will have a constant number of spikes in all your sprints. Ideally, you will have every sprint one spike. I know that this sounds very nice in reality and in practice is quite hard, but if you manage to find like every second sprint to have a spike or you manage to find a way to bring the spikes into your team and you can check out the video that I made on how you can do refinements and how you can use spikes to do product backlog refinements instead of the classic meetings, then that will bring a lot of clarity on the user stories, on the features the team needs to do, and it will help them to estimate better, to think it more without the pressure of delivery. And that will help speed up. And I'm going to the last point, which is remove blockers. If there is one job that you have as a Scrum Master as a development team manager is to remove the blockers. That's not the responsibility of the team. That's not the responsibility of anyone else than you. Removing the blockers is your number one to do every single day. And we optimize the velocity with all these 15 points. How do we keep it? Well, discipline. From my perspective, discipline is a key in anything we want to do in, in our lives, especially in our professional lives. We need to be constant. We need to be there every single day. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your colleagues and subscribe to this channel. And I will see you next week with another video.